Giordano. Uh, it's nearly nearly midnight here, um, but I felt compelled to jump on the computer anyway, and I wanted to share something with you that I've just been thinking about tonight. Um, and it's the biggest mistake that I made when I started learning Te Reo Māori. Um, and it's, it's something that I can't really change now because it's all sort of in the past, but um, you know, maybe the lessons from this will, will help you on your journey. So um, I guess straight to the point, my biggest mistake was that I didn't start early enough. Um, and I guess what the main driver for me was when I first started was um, when my son was born, and I didn't want him, when I grew up, I, I felt a bit, um, you know, a bit ashamed and a bit shy and a bit sad that I never knew much about Māori culture and especially I didn't know how to speak Te Reo Māori. Um, we didn't speak it at home or anything. Um, none of my relatives around here spoke it. I grew up in Australia. Um, and, you know, I always I always felt a bit oh, funny. Like, I, I felt like I wasn't Māori, eh? And, didn't want him, and, and obviously that's completely not the case. Um, it's just just the way I sort of felt. Um, you know, you don't have to know how to speak Te Reo Māori to, to be Māori. Um, so I basically didn't want him or any of my future kids, uh, you know, I only had him at the time, I didn't want any, any of them to sort of have that same feeling and I realised that if they wanted to know about that side of them, that knowing how to speak Te Reo Māori would be the best avenue for that because once you can understand the language then you can start to understand concepts a lot better um, so I went about I started learning um, after he was born I made a commitment to learn um, you know whether I learnt quick enough whether I pushed myself hard enough um, I could probably question all those things um, but basically the reason I think the mistake was not starting early enough was um, as he grew older, he got to the point where he could start to talk. And so before he could talk, I would I would talk to him in Te Reo Māori um, from what I knew, and it wasn't much. Um, it's, it's a bit of a struggle trying to learn on your own, um, but I, I did persist. So I was talking to him, and then he finally learned how to talk, um, and you know he started talking back, which was good. And you know it's just really simple stuff at that at that age. You know you're pointing out. Um, body features and saying mama and papa and tamma and the goody, just all those little things. And he's quite engaged with it. And I thought, you know what, this is really good. This is really good. Um, and then moving forward as his speech really started to, to take off and really start to develop really well, what happened was um, if, I would say what happened was, um, me being, I guess, the main breadwinner in the house, so this might resonate a bit more with some of the uh, the breadwinners, which in most cases, um, without being too stereotypical, is the male in the house. So this might resonate with males a little bit more. Um, you end up, well, I ended up working long hours um, where I didn't get to see the kids all that much through the week. So I might get to see them for like, 20 minutes, half an hour in the morning if I was lucky, and then if I get home a bit later, um, see them for you know maybe an hour or so. And what happens is you, you start to just get you get into this bit of a bit of a routine where you're not you, you can catch yourself slipping out and knowing what you should be doing. You know that you should be actively speaking the Reo Māori to your children so that they can learn, but you just get you just get lazy. Um, and what what ends up happening is that time that limited time that you do have with them you're you're trying to teach them even if i was speaking to them uh full time it's still it's still tough when it's not that great of amount of time now for the rest of his day he's with his mum who you know she supported it but she wasn't going to go out and learn it um and a lot of people are going to be like that and that's that's okay there's nothing wrong with that um he had lots of her family around all the time, and they all speak English. Uh, goes to daycare, went to daycare. They all speak English. None of my family speaks Māori. Um, so he ends up 
obviously, as most kids do, they end up learning English really well. And it got to the point where I was learning things uh, that I didn't have enough time with him to actually, uh, I, I didn't have enough time with him for him to actually learn what I was learning and what I was saying. And what ended up happening was he actually started to get uh, annoyed with me when I would speak in Maori to him. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it gets disheartening. It, it really does. It gets disheartening. You feel, you feel a bit sad. You feel, you feel like you failed a bit. Um, and it's a bit of a hard pill to swallow. Um, but you, you still persist with it. And I still do persist with it. But um, it gets to the point where, well, it got, for me anyway, it got to the point where he would, you know, just flat out and say, Dad, speak English. I speak, speak English. I hate speaking Māori. I don't want to speak Māori. I don't know what you're saying. Um, so this is obviously at the point where he's got quite well-developed speech. Um, and then that went on for a while. And, you know, he's about five now. Um, and it's not... It probably has changed a little bit because he does understand a little bit more and he's definitely not as uh, opposed to it as he went through this little phase where he was quite against it. Um, but then some of... On the other hand, as kids do, they switch their minds around a little, a lot. Um, and some days he'd be really keen to get into it, and we'd listen to Maori songs, and you know we'd go to Kapahaka. And then other days, didn't want to go to Kapahaka, didn't want to listen to anything, didn't want to speak Maori, just didn't want to be involved with it at all. Um, and and that's hard. So the reason I say that not starting early enough was my biggest mistake was that, um, or is that, I didn't have enough fluency from the start to really engage with him properly. It was like, I'm still tripping over things, trying to learn things, and he's still tripping over things, trying to learn things, and then he just gets to this point where English is just so dominant um, that it just it just takes over. Um, and then the other thing is obviously not being able to spend enough time with him and and, and talk with him too. So um, my advice is, I guess there's probably two pieces of advice here. Start early. If you don't have, if you start straight away really, but you know, if, you, if you're gonna have kids at one point, if you don't have them yet and you're thinking about it, um, definitely start before you have them. I would definitely say start before you have them because um, you might you might get that rush that came over me when you have a child that, oh, man, I don't want my... I, I felt like this as a kid myself and I don't want my kids to feel like that. And then you start. And, it, you know, it's never too late to start, but it might just be easier if you start earlier. Um, and then the other one would be just try and spend as much time with them, just court it or court it or court it or with them. Um, because yeah, like in my case, there probably wasn't enough time for it to, to sink in with him. Um, but yeah, that's just my experience. Uh, it's obviously not going to be the same for everyone. It might be different. Uh, probably will be different. No, no two people are the same. Um, but that's just my advice. I would just say start, stay consistent, um, and and just talk as much as you can with your kids. So good luck with your learning. Um, keep pushing it on your kids, uh, not in a forceful way, but just keep them exposed. In the same way that they just get naturally exposed to English, um, work on building that environment where they can just be naturally exposed to the real Māori. Um, and I think you'll have a lot of success. So I better hit the hay. Um, but yeah, keep at it and we'll talk soon.